If we haven't met, I'm Jennifer Elliott and welcome to Yin. And today we're working inner legs, outer legs. So that's kind of our goal. Um, earlier I was mentioning that I'm going to use a pre-looped strap for our second pose. And so I just threw a little loop in the strap. If you don't have it, you, that's fine. I just like to have the loop. And then I'm going to use a blanket and a couple of blocks. So the first pose that we'll do is reclined butterfly. In any of these poses, it's really up to you how you move into them. So I give an offering and then usually a few different options of how you want to do it. So I'm putting two blocks next to one another. This could be a bolster, a couple of blankets. And I'm going to put the soles of my feet onto the blocks. This just feels really nice in my body. But our target area is inner thighs. And so if you prefer to do this reclined butterfly with blocks under the knees or a bolster under the spine, that's fine. So Get set up in any way you'd like. And then I'm going to use a timer. And that just sort of tells us how long we're in our pose. So we're going to be in this first pose for four minutes. Insight timer is the timer I use in case you want to ever get this bell sound. So find your way into a reclined butterfly of choice. It could be my version with the props under the feet. It can be your own version. And then just let the eyes close. And the jaw unhinge. And take a few moments just to let your whole body ground. And so just even as I said that, I realized I had a little bit of tension in my thighs and just even that acknowledgement of it allowed gravity to take over those legs to just get soft and relaxed. And everyone's a little bit different. So if you're here and you're feeling this in your knees or your lower back, then you may want to prop the knees or you can always back out and bring the knees together instead. Let's just find the breath. In and out through the nose. You might consider placing one hand over the belly, one hand over the heart. Just take a few natural breaths and notice which hand moves first or at all. And then take an inhale through your nose and let the hand over the belly rise. So let the belly rise on the inhale. And then try to pull the breath up to the chest so that hand lifts. And exhale naturally. And again, inhale, let the belly rise. Continue to bring the breath up to the chest. And exhale naturally. And just take three of those breaths on your own. And allow your breath to take on its own pattern. And if it gives you a feeling of comfort or release, keep the hands as they are. Otherwise, you might prefer to let them draw down. We've got a little over a minute in this pose. My whole practice is really about allowing being able to receive a lot of gravity take over. But subconsciously, we might be holding or gripping or contracted. And if we're contracted, if we're closed off, we're not open to receive. So allow the exhales to be longer so you're more full for an inhale. Allow the bones to get heavy. The grounding you down. And the breath just creates this nice animation of the inner body, creating space. Mm -hmm. 
That's fast. All right. Take your hands to your outer knees. Guide them together. Just take a moment. We always want to rebound after a pose and just sort of observe how we feel, sort of let the body receive those benefits. And then if you have blocks, what's nice about them is you can just kind of move them off to either side. Keep them close because you might use them. And then just cross your right ankle over your left knee. Pause there for a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strap. It's got the pre-made loop. You don't have to do this, but it's just nice. And I'm going to put it over the sole of the right foot. And then some of you, you may just end up making this a thread the needle and that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten the left leg. And I'm going to keep this figure four and let the right knee draw down. Now I've got my block there, or it could be a blanket or something, just to give that hip a little bit of a support. And this may be uh, as far as you go. You may stay sort of just crossing the foot over the knee, or you might eventually pull that leg up more towards the inner hip crease. And you can hold the foot, or what I like about this pre-loop is I can kind of slide it over my elbow, and then I just can kind of rest there. So. Again, some version of a figure four, whether that left leg is straight or bent. I'll go ahead and start the timer so we're not here longer than we need. Most of our poses will sort of go between three and four minute holds. And I often give several different options. So really think less about what the pose looks like or where you think you're supposed to be and more just really connect to target area. So because we know today is all about the inner legs, the outer legs, those are our target areas. So I definitely feel this on that inner thigh. You might consider lowering or removing props or taking that foot higher up the thigh if that's reasonable for your hip and your knee, nothing forced. And then once you've come back to your pose, you've sort of made those adjustments for you, then we really just find stillness. And close the eyes. Notice the natural rhythm of your breath. And then just visualize where the breath is going through the body. So when you have the hand over the belly and over the heart, you can kind of feel the breath moving from the belly up to the chest. But almost imagine that you could breathe maybe down into that right leg and then back up to the crown. Or maybe you have a different direction in the body you'd like to send the breath. But visualization is really great. It sort of connects you to the physical body, so it keeps you a bit more present. And that visualization starts to train that meditative mind, which is really what we're focusing on as well. That's where we're getting our strength in these poses, is the strength of the mind. And then you also want to notice what type of sensation you're feeling. It's okay to feel uncomfortable or like maybe you have to soften or breathe through the pose, but we also want to make sure that's in the correct joints, like maybe in the hip, but not in the knee. We're not pushing through any discomfort in the knee. And if it feels like it's too much, you just slightly back off. But we're here less than 30 seconds. slowly unwind by just setting both feet onto the floor, knees bent, you can let the knees fall into one another, rebound, just feel the experience for a moment. And then cross left ankle over the right knee. And then again, maybe you slip that strap over the foot. Now, if that was not for you, that's sort of half uh, lotus or sort of an extended figure four, it can absolutely be thread the needle. So don't 
get so stuck on the pose, do what you need. So if you want, straighten the right leg, throw your prop, whatever height you need under the knee or hip. Just take a few breaths here, getting settled. Obviously, sides are different. So some sides you might feel like you have a lot of range of motion, some sides not at all. So think less about what's nice about sort of this platform is that we don't necessarily see a lot of our neighbors. So we're not really going to compare to what our neighbor looks like and, and sort of compare that to what we think we should look like. It's really about the ability to feel. Does that feel like the right place for you? And sometimes we have to notice what our relationship to discomfort is. Are you a sensation junkie? You want to just feel that deep stretch no matter what? Or are you someone that's more uh, moving away? You're adverse to anything that might be uncomfortable. So find that sensation. Breathe into it. If it's something that you can maintain, keep it. Maybe my hold the foot. I just got this little loop over my elbow. It's comfortable for me. And you feel the breath move through this side of the body. And you can imagine maybe how the blood vessels go through the body. But can you imagine the nadis, the little river channels that the prana flows through the breath? Or or just prana, it's not quite breath, but it's how we think of it. So imagine that those little rivers, those little channels throughout the body, could you send your breath through those? How many channels can you find? Is it just one? Do you find many in the body? Just visualize and investigate. You might be removing or lowering props away. We have less than a minute. Part of what we're looking to do is change our patterns and our habits. So each time I go back to this pose and sort of settle in on my own, notice my jaw is sort of tensing, and that's just my sort of subconscious way of protecting. Because we all have those little things, the hands, the lower back. And so once we recognize it, then we relax it, we make that change. And the more we're aware of it, the more it changes. And eventually our new normal is that that jaw doesn't grip. Unwind, set your feet onto the ground, let the knees fall into one another, just take a moment. Roll to your side and press yourself up to seated. Okay, so we're going to continue with this theme of the inner thighs for a little while. So I'm going to give a few options. So the one that I'll be doing, I'm going to be doing butterfly, just a standard butterfly. So soles of the feet coming in towards the body. You can sit tall, you can forward fold. Um, I've had a conversation with a few of you that had low back disc herniations. If that's you, then real, be real mindful on folding forward. Or you might do this at the wall as butterfly. Or what I really like about using the wall is more like malasana. So you can take those feet wider. You can even sit in the last if you want to do this um, seated as a squat. So again, target is inner thighs. I'm going to do that straightforward butterfly that you can choose for you. But have knees bent. We're going to do sort of a straight leg one here in a moment. So standard butterfly, malasana, or use the wall. We're going to be here a little longer. We're going to be here four minutes, so longer than the last pose. All right. 
you have a blanket, you're sitting at the very edge of it. If you sit in the center of it, it more sort of rounds and collapses the back. So if you sit at the edge, you see no blanket between your legs, you tip forward, it just tilts your pelvis forward in a nice way. And you can just sit as tall as you are. Uh, I have sandbags, but I don't feel like grabbing them. If you have sandbags or blankets you want to put on your thighs, that's really nice. But just find that place for you where gravity takes over. Yin is generally, not always, but a lot of times the lower body, but you can always add the arms if you'd like. So sometimes it's nice to add a little eagle arms resting on your props. And even resting your forehead on the block or floor. Move back to the awareness of the breath. So for me, as I fold forward and I breathe, I can actually feel my side ribs widening. We forget sometimes that it's not just through the chest, but through the side ribs, through the back ribs. So if you're lying on the ground, you might feel the back ribs really breathing into the earth. But see if you can feel the breath moving in all directions. I'm about halfway through this pose. The moment we're approaching our last minute. So consider counting your breath like you're counting sheep. So as always, not to fall asleep, but to train that meditative mind. So maybe you can get to a full 10 counts. See where you get with that less than 60 seconds. All right, I got to about eight breath counts. I don't know about you. So what we're going to do next, um, I'm going to straighten my right leg out. So everything else is pretty much going to stay the same. I'm, I'm, for me personally, pulling the other foot in. That's just the most comfortable. Uh, but the target, again, is the inner thigh. So I'm going to give options in case this isn't for your knee or you just, you know, want something different. So what I'm going to do is keep the blocks in front of me and hinge forward. And I still feel this on my inner thigh. But a nice one... It's called outrigger. So if you don't like that, you can come either high up onto your hands and knees, or you can even be lower like it's from child's pose. And you can just take one leg out to the side and you can stretch the inner thigh that way. So again, target is inner thigh, one leg is straight. This is called outrigger. But I'm gonna do more of the half butterfly. So my left leg is in like Johnny, or a half butterfly, and my right leg is straight. So choose anything, if those aren't for you, that stretches one inner thigh straight. And then we'll drop back down to our three minutes.
Now the target is inner thigh, but I always like to give sort of real broad strokes so that you can sort of uh, paint it how you like, you can sort of explore. And so it might make sense to forward fold. Now again, target is inner thigh, so I feel it the most this way. But some of you might even feel like you want to lean over to the right and add any bit of a side body stretch. So these are just options. I'm going to stay forward folding. That works really nice for me today. Now, once you've located your pose, you're sort of where you want to be. Just commit to that stillness. See if you can close the eyes. And our breath count now is Sama Vritti, even ratio breath. And so the inhale will come in through the nose for four counts. And the exhale out the nose for four. If you haven't already started, inhale for four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale for four. Three, two, one, pause. Inhale for four. Exhale for four. Continue on your own, less than 90 seconds. Last few cycles. And some of you are taking the side body angle. So if that's you, you're going to want to come out of it pretty slowly. Just give yourself a moment to rebound. Just take your time. All right. Slowly come up from wherever you are. And I forgot to mention, if you're like me, I tend to lock out my knee. So if the straight leg needs a little bit uh, of a lift underneath, which I'm actually going to grab something. I've got just like a little towel or something I'll do under the other side. I'm just going to throw that under the knee. So right leg is coming in like butterfly, left leg is straight, or whatever version you took for you to get into the inner thigh of that left leg. And again, I'm just taking just a little bit of a, a rolled prop here. A little <laughs> sliding it into the knee just helps me not completely uh, lock out that knee. All right, so going back to three minutes. You're either in this half butterfly or outrigger, or you found some other combination that works for you. And a few of you even took a side angle. Interesting. I can already feel a huge difference. This side is not as tight or not as much sensation as the first side. So I recognize already that I'm sort of being a sensation junkie and I want to find that deeper stretch. That may or may not be the right uh, answer for me, but just sort of observing my own motivation for movement. So again, we close our eyes. Just sort of tap in 
to that breath. You can stay with the Sama Vritti, the even ratio breathing. Four and four may have worked for you. Um, I think it's been proven in something like five and a half counts, inhale and exhale, puts you in this very meditative state. I think if you um, chant internally, Om Mani Padme Hum, I think that that ends up being the five uh, and a half breath count and then on the way out as well. So you can sort of notice on inhale, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. So you might add that, see if that helps you stay uh, with your breath. More about a minute left. Again, if you took the side angle, you want to back out real slow. Take your time. All right. So bring yourself back up, right? You can have a seat and rebound. Just comfortably have a seat, and I'll demo our next pose. So we have one last pose sort of of this full inner thigh stretch. So at the very least, you might take your legs out and sort of just do this wide leg stretch. Now, again, for me, I lock out my knees. I'm fairly flexible, but that bothers. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my blanket sideways and I'm rolling it up any amount that you want. And I can just slide this under my knees. And so this is just a really great way, again, to let my knees have that uh, little bit of comfort. So split leg. If you're at the wall, which is, again, another one of my favorites, this is great if you have any lower back concerns and you don't feel like taking a forward pull, legs up the wall, and split. So choose one of those, or you may have your own pose that you like. And we'll be here back for four minutes, and then we'll start sort of unwinding and going the other direction, getting into the outer hips. All right, four minutes. What I like about Yana, one of the things is it really uh, allows us to increase our patience and our endurance and stamina for these postures. I think everything uh, these days is very quick and short. And um, I watch a lot of the quick little things on YouTube and I find myself getting bored and I click off and I realize I've only, only been watching it 20 seconds. <laughs> so we're just so used to things being so fast and, and so, um, quick that we're not really ever fully present. And so in these poses, you might fidget, you might move, you might think, you might have all those going on, but hopefully there's a long enough time that at some point you just settle and you're able to just really be present, really be in the posture and see what that experience is for you. We've got about two and a half minutes left.
and let the breath travel up and down the spine. And seeking out any areas that feel that they need the space. Many of us may feel that the space around us is very chaotic. It may be sort of an unkept house or people around you or noises outside. But we want to almost imagine that we are the eye of the storm. We're in the center. We're in the calm. So it might be busy and chaotic around us, but we're kind of moving within so that we find that stillness. We find that perfect center. We're really unaffected by what's happening around us. Not allowing it to penetrate our stillness. We've got about 40 seconds. So if you have legs up the wall, uh, or split up the wall, just gently draw, draw them together. If you're in the center of the room with the legs split, take your time, come back, but you're gonna move slow. What I like to do is just sort of reach for each thigh and manually bring them back. Take a moment, you can cross comfortably at the ankles. And then uh, if you're at the wall, you can bend your knees, roll to the side and come out. I'm gonna just take my blanket to have a seat on it. I'm going to start to move into the outer hips now. It should be nice. I like to give those inner thighs a rest. So I am sitting on my blanket and I'm going to move into Sukhasana. Now this is just for me. Um, you know, a lot of times we can be really open in one way of our hips, but not another. So I'm most likely going to stay in Sukhasana, which means I'm just crossing middle of the shins versus at the ankles. Some of you, we'll see if my knee will let me do it. <laughs> some of you may stack. So foot on top of knee, knee on top of foot. Uh, for me, if I were to do it, I would put something underneath to sort of support myself. But this isn't where I am yet, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna stay with Sukhasana, either seated or forward folding. Now, because I know we all like options, if forward folding is not for you, you can also do thread the needle on your back. This can also be a single pigeon, that's fine. So any of those versions, again, all stick with Sukhasana. And we're going to be here. Let's see how long do I want us here. I think we're going to be here. Let's see, switch my pose here. Three minutes. Uh, let's do four. I think we can pull it off. Let's do four minutes. And uh, then I'll give you a halfway point. So maybe you might start with Sukhasana and then go into double pigeon if you'd like. Just tap into that meditative mind. Close the eyes. And see if you can just really be present in this pose. And as you're present, you're just noticing sensation. And then you're investigating. There's no physical sensation that doesn't have an emotional response. So see if you can locate any physical sensation. And investigate it. How do you feel? What does that make you feel? And go a little deeper. Notice your thoughts. They don't have to do necessarily with how you feel. You might be wandering off to a different thought. That's fine. Observe the quality of the breath. Is it through the nose or the mouth? 
labor, or steady and even. And just commit to stillness. We're approaching halfway through this pose. So if you were feeling like you wanted to go deeper, like double pigeon, or take it into a slightly different posture, go for it. About two minutes left. See, even for me, after two minutes of sort of resting in Sukhasana, I'm already a little bit more uh, successful at my double pigeon. It just took time to release, to relax. To not have my external expectations. Mm, 90 seconds left. Maybe to our best efforts, we might still feel distracted, and that's fine. Just let yourself go with that distraction to create a label. I'm thinking of the future, the past, and the memory. And 30 seconds left. by the bell. <laughs> so let's go ahead and release. And maybe, so know what leg is on top of it. For me, it's my right. Take your legs and maybe just do a little windshield wiper. Give yourself a moment, a little massage. That's something that feels like it's not that pose. And then we'll switch to the other side. So left leg in front or on top, whatever pose you took. Continuing our four minutes. In this round, you might continue with any of the visualizations or breath work that I've given you. But on this one, I'm going to work on long exhales, which helps to sort of calm the mind and nervous system even more. So it'll be in for four, out for six. Close the eyes, take an inhale through the nose for four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale out the nose, four, Three, two, one. And I forgot, so I'll add one, two. All right, inhale for four. And exhale for six. Inhale four. Exhale six. Or eight. 
Take a couple of recovery breaths. You can stay as you are or we're halfway through the pose if you went deeper into double pigeon. Maybe return to that long exhale if you like. So 90 seconds. Release any tension so you can melt away any gripping in the hips, even if that means that you slightly back off. Thirty seconds. Unwind, go slow. Enjoy for the legs or do whatever you need to rebound. Get that circulation back. And then we have one final pose seated and then we'll come to our back for our finishing uh, stretch. So um, you can either cross right knee over left for Gomugasana. So again, we're working those outer hips or and again, this is a lot of times called shoe So one leg over the other. You can straighten the bottom leg if you need or what's really nice if you have that wall you can do this at the wall, which is a really nice way to get into it. Legs at the wall, cross knee over knee, and then let the feet slide down to either side. You can flex them and you can move into it that way. So choose one of those versions or just something to get into the outer hip. If you're like me, sometimes I have knee troubles. We're going to do this with the final pose, but if I missed you and none of those are for you because the knees are all bent, you can take a strap over the leg and just cross at a diagonal, keeping that hip on the ground. So this is the last option if uh, these bent knees is not for you. Okay, so I'll start the timer. We'll drop back down to three minutes. Yay. <laughs> okay, we're in. So if you're in this pose like I am, and you feel like one hip is higher than the other. And I'll show you sort of from the back so that you sort of get a visual. So we want our hips to be even, but it's really common that the hip is, is hiked and the hip is tight. So we're sort of leaning over on one hip. You can see how this is really jamming the lower back. So if that was the case, I would just put myself higher on a blanket or choose the pose at the wall so I could get my hips level, my back nice and open. Okay. What's nice about the uh, timers, doesn't matter how much I'm talking, it's still going, so don't worry. And part of the timer, what I like, is there's this feeling of sort of safety and sort of some very hard concrete end to a pose. Uh, have you ever been in a class and someone has you, you know, in forever on one side and not on the other, and you just think, God, have they forgotten about us? What's going on? So what's nice about the timer is you feel safe. You know that there's an end point. I haven't forgotten about you. And then you have that time in the middle to sort of create that shape that you need to create the space through the breath, through the stilling of the mind. 
We're well, already halfway there. There's 90 seconds left. Let go of something, your breath, a thought, an expectation. <laughs> just the other side. So take the left leg on top, whatever that looks like for you. Okay. Sometimes I get these questions in class where, um, are the knees supposed to completely stack in theory, yes, but most of us don't really uh, stack in the same way. Some of you might have longer femur bones, longer leg bones, shorter bones, um, you know, however you rotate in the hip socket, however they stack on top of one another. So think less about what it visually looks like. That's, you know, a lot of times I cringe when I see um, yoga pictures in magazines because they're wrong. They, they're, they do them for effect for the um, for the picture, but oftentimes it's doing something that's either really incorrect or harmful on the body, um, just because aesthetically they think that that's what they want. So really tap into how you feel. That's what's really nice about not having mirrors or anything around is it's really your experience, not how you think it should look, right? Not that reflection. So to close the eyes and observe your inner reflection. Does this feel like your best pose from within? We are already almost halfway there. The last All right, so I can come on out. And then <laughs> what I've done 
is I've taken my strap and I just made it a really big loop. This is my super short strap, so I'm not gonna um, put it around my body or anything like I normally do with this pose, so you know um, my final stretch. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, because we're not gonna be here a ton of time, because I'd like to give you a, a shavasana. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come to my back, place it over my foot. So again, in the beginning of the class, we were talking about, do you want it over the heel? Do you want the strap over the front of the foot? That's really up to you. Over the front of the foot, you can pull the foot towards you, stretch the calf over the heel. You can really anchor through uh, the back body, through the whole back line. So I'm gonna stay over the heel for now. We'll see where it goes. So you can take the strap, slide it over the elbows. Some of you, the strap is big enough to loop under the body, but I'm not gonna be here that long. I'm not even gonna do my timer. I'm just gonna sort of count the breath. It should feel nice. We've done a lot of our poses with bent knees today. So we're just getting a little bit of a stretch. You can have a strap just holding the leg, just something to get that leg straight. Prop or in my outer hip. Now I discovered this once on a retreat where the straps were super short and a lot of stuff I did with the straps didn't really work. So because I have a short strap, I'm going to do that for me. But again, it's just optional. I'm sliding the strap over my right shoulder like it's a purse. And then I'm either going to keep the right arm in cactus or slide it under, under my head like I want to do a sit-up. And then I'm going to open the leg out to the right to move into that inner thigh stretch. And again, we're not here long. And this sort of shoulder strap thing is, is just an option. You can just simply hold the strap in your hands if you'd like. You'll notice what I did is I took my block flat and I turned it on its side like a ramp. It's more comfortable and then I'm not dropping all the way to the floor. I'm going to bring the leg up and then just because I'm using the shoulder strap thing, I'm going to do it on the other side. I can take my hand under my head and I can stay kind of at this diagonal. Ooh, this actually feels pretty powerful for me. I can stay here or I can take the leg all the way across. Now because I feel it a little bit more powerfully at a diagonal, I'm going to stay there. But take the leg across the body, whether it's diagonal or all the way over for a twist. All right, bring your leg to center. Again, not the full yin length, so just enough to get us comfy in Shavasana. Release the leg down, close the eyes. And imagine if this was Shavasana. I don't know about you, but I do not feel ready. I feel like that right side feels really good. The left side feels stiff and a little bit um, upset <laughs> that I haven't stretched it yet. So let's get into the left side. Strap over the left foot, or however you're doing that for you. Open left, my knee is a wall like I have here. Left to 
center and cross it over to the right. Any amount. <laughs> I'm so shocked when it feels so intense. That's a good reminder. This doesn't seem sort of visually like some big movement, and it's so powerful, it's such an intense sensation. So it's always just a reminder that a lot of times less is more. Bring ourselves back to center. Hold the knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice hug. Do whatever you'd like here. We're going to set up for Shavasana. I'm just going to slide my blanket under my knees, make it super simple. I'm going to use my timer so, like our poses, we feel safe and relaxed, not worried about when uh, I'm going to take this out. So, I'm going to do a total of three minutes for our Shavasana. Timer is going. Get comfortable. Let the eyes close. And no longer are we a left and a right side, inner thighs, outer thighs. We're just one whole being. So not really doing anymore, but just learning how to be. Be a being in the body, in the present. Be here now. Shavasana. Start to draw our attention back. Fingers and toes. You can reach the arms overhead, maybe yawn. Bend your knees, make your way to your right side. And then with eyes closed or partially closed, press yourself upright to seated. Hands to your heart in gratitude for all the work your body has done. Lift your heart, bow your head, 
Namaste.